Welcome to Story Comic Presents, where we interview amazing storytellers and artists. This is episode 142. We are welcoming back to the show famed writer and artist Caleb Palmquist. Caleb, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. And you're here to talk to us about your latest Kickstarter, Vampire Detective in Space, issue number one. That's right. That's right. Excellent. All right. And it's uh, I, and this was the, this was the sub the subheading to it: a detective story about a vampire living in space. With his snarky AI companion. Yep. 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 So this is kind of a you talked about you you talked about vampire detective in space a bit when you were on uh, a few months ago, and this is kind of uh, a, a departure from Unicorn Vampire Hunter in a way. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I I mean, there's like uh, there's the vampire link. Obviously, right. they're both about vampires, but this book is very different from that book. Um, it is a sci-fi story. Um, and it is, um, it's based on a, the, the kernel of a story that I've had that I've been trying to tell for a while. I had a comic book called a small favor. That was my first comic book. And, um, that, was I was very passionate about. I was co-writing with a friend, but it never really went anywhere. Um, and um, you know there were there were some people that were enjoying it, but it was my first attempt at comics, and uh, and I've learned a lot since. And so what I did was I took the characters that I really liked, the two main characters of this book, and a few other characters sprinkled throughout, and I put them in a new setting, changed up the plot a little bit. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm telling a brand new story, but at the core of it, it's about this thousand year old guy um, who is solving mysteries in space. Um, and he has, he has a long and complicated past that is maybe going to come catch up to him. Um, and now in this version, he's a vampire. And, um, and the reason I wanted to do that is not only because I had so much fun writing vampires in my other series, but also because um, I thought that the idea of a vampire living in space was very interesting because of all the things that he would have to deal with, like how does the sunlight work and, um, you know, what counts as sunlight and what, and, and all these other things. So, but ultimately when it comes to vampires and how they work and the rules of the world, I am making it up as I go along. And um, it's really a story about the characters as, as all my stories are They're they're about the characters and the relationships between the characters. So if you, what I always tell people is if you come into one of my books, like Unicorn Vampire Hunter or Vampire Detective in Space, looking for a goofy, high concept romp full of jokes and nothing else, <laughs> then that's not what you're going to find because I lure you in thinking that it's a goofy thing. And then, uh, you know, I hit you with uh, the heavy character beats and, and, um, and love stories and all that kind of thing. So, I like a, a high concept goofy romp. If that's what you're thinking, I like that's a that that, that that's a that's a pretty interesting uh, description. Now, do you have uh, invariably your readers and your fans or people that have been following Unicorn Vampire is going to ask this, um, and I think you've kind of already answered it. Is is this the same type of vampire like as you? world building wise like is it the same origin story of where the vampires come from is it the same thing? so that's an interesting question um i mean the rules of the vampires are are mostly the same um this one um i think actually gets a little bit more into how vampires work than unicorn vampire hunter okay. because the main character is a vampire whereas in unicorn vampire hunter the vampires are the bad guys Right. Um, and they're in a fantasy setting. Um, and there's a lot there that's just like goes without saying about how vampires work. Whereas in this book, it's more of a question, um, especially as we get into the second issue, which is currently being drawn, um, like the mechanics of vampires in space and how they work. In my mind, they are the same type of vampires, but they do not exist in the same world. Um, okay. This is a world that was once Earth. 
and like or people from Earth went out and colonized the stars, and this story takes place a thousand years later. Whereas Unicorn Vampire Hunter takes place in a fantasy world. Right. Um, yeah. So, but can people? Because I'm looking at it with like you know the character named James, and here's the. So I mean, you you have these uh, these Anglophone names, and invariably, are you? Is 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 this a thing where you're going to say it is not the same world, or you can say it like? go ahead and read what you want into it because I mean, you could I, say that it's yeah you years in the future for instance or i mean maybe maybe i think um i mean if if people want to believe they're in the same world they can believe they're in the same world um it is uh this vampire detective in space is very much like a cyberpunk sci-fi thing there besides the fact that vampires exist there's not really magic um, in this world, um, it is like, this is very much the story that I wanted to tell that is like, um, altered carbon meets blade runner meets hard boiled detective fiction, right. um, with vampires thrown in. Um, and, um, so they're related. I mean, the other thing is a question of like empathy, like in unicorn vampire hunter, I, even the villains, I try to write empathetically. I'm trying to write like compelling villains. But in this book, the main character who you're supposed to be rooting for is a vampire. Right. Um, and so I approach it a little bit differently. I never really frame him as a villain, even though he is a vampire. Um, so um, I had the thought the other day, like, what if the main bad guy vampire from unicorn vampire hunter met this vampire i don't think he would like him i think he would i think he enrique from unicorn vampire hunter would be disgusted by james right. because james james is a vegan vampire he doesn't kill live humans uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and that that's one of the things of having like a a, a vegan vampire yeah yeah um he grows blood on his ship he um, he has figured out essentially how to clone blood. It's like it's like when they try to grow actual meat in labs, right? Without like the the animal attached to it, like a um, so there's no suffering. Like so he he's got a a lab that grows the blood. So it it is in a certain sense technically real human blood, but no humans died to make it. Right. Um, yeah. Now Dave Swartz is the artist for this yep now how did you i mean in in before you had uh unicorn vampire you had you had daryl daryl toe is the artist on unicorn vampire hunter who i've known for a number of years and i basically right. poached him from an artist friend i mean a writer friend of mine that that's not true uh he <laughs> he had worked on a book called is none of the Wear spider and um and i really love that book and i'm friends with uh greg anderson elise who writes that book and um, and Daryl had done that book. And then I was like, oh man, uh, Daryl is awesome. And I asked Daryl to do this book and I thought he would say no. And, and then he, he said yes. And then, but obviously Daryl can't draw every book that I do, <laughs> nor would I want him to, um, right. because, you know, um, he's got his own stuff going on, but I was looking for a new artist, um, for, uh, vampire detective in space. And actually what I did was I put out a call. Um, on Facebook, I said, you know, that I was looking for an artist and that this is sort of the style I was looking for. Um, and I got, of course, I got a lot of people responding to me and sending me portfolios and stuff. And Dave was actually just one of the people that responded to me. And, um, and of the people that responded to me, I thought that he was, his art was awesome. And, um, and he seemed excited about the concept because that was one of the it was an interesting experience having basically interviewing several artists about the project because I wanted someone who would be excited about the concept. And, and Dave is that like Daryl went on unicorn vampire hunter is always coming up with ideas and Dave does the same thing. Right. A lot of what's happening in this story is heavily influenced by Dave him coming up with ideas and him sending me things and um and you know he's he's learning that i think he's got better ideas than than, <laughs> than i do 
because he you know he'll he'll send me messages and be like i was thinking about doing this uh would that be okay if i made this small change and added this element to this scene and i'm like yeah dude of course that sounds awesome and uh, uh you know so um that's that's the best kind of collaboration for me and he's he's like the nicest guy dave is like um he's uh and 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 he's he's like such a vibrant personality he he does when he's not drawing comics he's also doing a lot of other types of art and one of the big types of art he does is like these psychedelic paintings that he he like trips and does these psychedelic like like crazy paintings i don't even know how to describe them they're very, they've been featured in vanity Fair uk so he's like oh wow he's like a legit fine artist that and he works under the influence of mushrooms and i it's like it's it's difficult to describe i don't and it's so different it's like you see those paintings and then you see his comic book work and it's like worlds apart but he's just like very versatile you know he can do like vanity fair hike like like psychedelic paintings and also do like cool action comics and they're both good in their own ways you know and do you so you also posted online about you know you're you're working on a new project we don't know what that one is like publicly we don't know what that one is yet and you said something along the lines of like man you know i you know i was able to strike you know strike gold you know with your with your other artists and have you ever seen an artist who that you said that you 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 know of they're like i have an idea and i it's, I, what am I trying to say here? Instead of having an IP and then finding the artist, have you ever been in a position where you like you found an artist and you thought this is I have something in my on my back burner that this is the perfect artist for? So I have, um, I have thought that I haven't necessarily acted on it. I oh, mean, okay. like, well, the problem is that you know, like time and money are, are, and, you know, are limited. So it's like, like, for example, um, there is a project that I want to do with Daryl. Um, that's un completely unrelated to unicorn vampire hunter that I know he would be perfect for, um, someday, um, that I was inspired by his work. Mm. There was an idea I came up with just like seeing his work. It's not the stuff that he does for Unicorn Member Hunter. And there have been other artists where I've, I've felt that way, but it's like, um, it is um, having a lot of projects going on at once. Is, right. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a lot, you know, like right now I'm running essentially two series at the same time, which is awesome. And I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm like developing two stories that I really like um, in, in addition to a, a third one that's like in the pipeline. But like it's it's a lot. Um, and so that was one of the things that I liked about um, modern mythology was that I got to do these little stories. And I, so I guess um, the one time that I came up with a story that I thought after I had chosen the artist was I worked on a story on modern mythology called Lorelei that um i co-wrote with uh with my girlfriend whose name is lorelei and it's um and we wrote it for the artist cr florence who is um is a really talented guy and it's about a woman who like um lures men who are married into like having salacious chats on on like tinder and then exposing them to their wives um, <laughs> And uh, because it's based on the story Lorelai, which is about a, a, a woman who was like betrayed by her lover, and now she like um, like sits on the on the rocks of Lorelai in on the Rhine, combing her beautiful hair and luring sailors to crash against the rocks. Um, and um, but so so I long long story short, I guess there was a short story that I wrote with a particular artist in mind, and I'd love to do more of that. But you know, if I could work, I mean, there are so many artists I want to work with and would love to work with. And, right. You know, I'll see artists and be like, oh man, there's a, a story idea I have that this guy would be perfect or, or <laughs> one would be perfect to, to draw. And like, oh man, I gotta, you know, I'm gonna have to, to, you know, take a second mortgage out or something if I can pay for all these. Like, do you, but at what point though, because of your IPs, at what point do you, 
take something where you're like, all right, you know what, then I need to find a writer for this and the artist. And then I just give the idea, like almost to the point where it's, you know, Stan Lee basically just signed off on stuff. So, you know, that, that's a good question. And the person to ask about that, I don't know if you are, have you ever had Mike Tiener on your show? No. I okay. He's this, uh, he's, he's running an upstart comic book imprint called Bad Bug Publishing or Bad Bug something. It's Bad yeah. Bug. And yeah. he, uh, he wrote a book called um, Black Jackets, which is, one of my favorite indie comics uh, ever. Don't tell him that I said that because his ego is like really too big. <laughs> um, he actually has a number of titles that he's done exactly what you're describing, where he had an idea and he hired an artist and a writer to do it. And he is just like the creator and like the kind of the showrunner. And, you know, he's right. like publishing these books. Um, it's like, like on a, on a, like a slightly higher level than just your standard self publishing. And so, um, he's, he's doing, he, he's like really created quite a, quite a catalog and he's only written a few of the titles and he's, oh, wow. um, and so, but I don't know, like to me that, that that's veering into like some administrative territory. And I've done that a little bit with the anthologies. The anthologies yeah. Right. And the reason that I'm not rushing out to launch another anthology is because it was exhausting. <laughs> uh, like it was fun and i think that the books were cool and there's some cool stories in them but man it was so tiring to be in that like administrator role and right um so you know and it's also like to be like okay i'm gonna hire a writer and an artist i'm paying more money and then i'm like how much you know I'm, I'm still i am very like i think i'm in a very fortunate position where the train is kind of rolling on the comics. Like I can, I make enough money selling them that I can, you know, make another one every time. Um, but I'm not really in a position yet. I haven't reached a point where, where I certainly I'm not paying myself and certainly I'm not able to like massively expand what I'm doing. Right. Um, so, you know, I, to answer your question, I see the appeal of that like the Stanley role. And I think I'm very hesitant to go there because um, of, of just like the tremendous amount of labor and work involved. Right. Yeah. So let's, I'm going to, I'm going to pull up, let's pull up the, your Kickstarter and look at some of these. Sure. Um, and I think I did find, is this the Dave Swartz right here? That is, look at that. That that's everything you need to know about Dave Swartz in that image right there. <laughs> yeah. So your artist for, for vampire detective in space is uh, Dave Swartz art.com. So yeah, exactly. And yeah. he is actually, if anyone's listening to this and is looking for an artist, Dave is trying to fill some upcoming slots. He wants to, he wants to pick up more more work and uh he works so fast you would think that i would be keeping him busy but he is like speeding through he's already cruising through issue two of my book and he wants to draw somebody else's book so if somebody's out there looking at this art and thinking man i have the perfect story for this guy right give him a ring for sure cool all right so you have um so we're, we're looking we're looking at um your uh, your tier levels. So how many pages do you have is, um, is the issue one? Oh gosh. Um, is it your standard 32 or I think it is 32. Did I, I might not have listed that. That's like one of the, the things that I always do. Um, and I guess that's crazy. I, Oh no, it is. I listed it on the page. It's 32. 32. 32 of story so that's not including like the cover pages All right um and i the 32 is like i like i definitely like to be in the 30s for a first issue because i want to have like a meaty enough you know issue one that that gives a good introduction to the story right right um, so you have, so that's, that's a, that's a really good, so you have your pledge level of your, your standard, uh, digital copy for five bucks. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's pretty standard. You have that usually set up for your other ones as well. It was about five bucks as well. Right. Yeah. 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 So, and, and yeah. I'll go ahead. 
Pr pricing on 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 Kickstarter is something that's like it's it's like a a really interesting thing to talk about and i have been all over the place on it and i think i've settled on a price point that that feels good for people um and um you know there's i mean you go on online reddit facebook there's a lot of arguments about this um i found a price point that i feel is fair and that works um and um but you know so that is, it, it's pretty much uniform across all my campaigns now. And how much, how, and so then you got your $9 and that's how much you've had for your, I think for your other ones as well was nine bucks for the, yeah. the actual comic book that people would get. Yeah. Plus they get a digital. They also, yeah, they always get the digital. So, yeah. Yep. All right. And then for $14, you have your variant cover. Yeah, the, this variant cover, um, I really am excited about. Um, the, there's both variant covers I'm super excited about. So because this idea is like sort of up, like what I call upcycled from my old story, A Small Favor, mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to use this cover that never actually got used. This got uh, uh, my my very good friend, Jonathan Fisher, who I've collaborated with a lot, drew this, this cover for A Small Favor, and it never got used. Oh, um, okay. And so I call it the Into the Vampire Verse because it's like a a, a, a variant of James, like the, the what James would have been in the old story. Oh, and cool. I think it's just such a striking cover that I wanted to use it. And so that's like, a, you know, a limited edition Kickstarter thing. But then the other cover is I'm also just in love with, which is Jeremy Treese. And Jeremy Treese actually did both of the main covers of the original A Small Favor, like the, the two books that I put out. Okay. And so I got him back and he is like a hard man to hire. He is, <laughs> he is like, he, he's done a lot of work over his career, but at this point he's really focusing on his own IPs, which are awesome. He's got a book called I'm So Goth and another one called Clawberry. And he's, he's like, I think he's, phenomenal i think he's one of the best talents in indie comics today but i uh you know called in some favors with him and and, and he agreed to do a, a variant cover for me and so and i and i think it's um it's just phenomenal we got james there on the cover as a vampire flipping a coin and 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 liz the the ai is there looking at him and i think it's just like a really really striking cover it's one of the, one of my favorite covers i've ever had commissioned um so I'm super excited about that one. Um, so yeah, we got we got a couple of variant covers, and and of course you know cool. you can get those uh, individually or as a bundle or as add-ons. So yeah, you have that for thirty six dollars. You have the collector's bundle, which is basically all the uh, is basically the as you said the two variant covers and the standard cover plus the digital. Yep. Yep. Oh, in die cut sticker you love your stickers and you love your trading cards i love that these are these are of all the things i've ever done on Kickstarter, <laughs> these, the stickers especially seem to be a hit people are always into them and jonathan fisher like i said i've worked with him a lot and he's done all my stickers on all my campaigns and uh we always try to go with stickers that feel like they would be fun no matter even if you don't know the context of the book um and so I, like this one is a little funny because he doesn't james in the story doesn't drink branded blood that's out of a bottle but we were jonathan and i were like batting ideas back and forth and we we're like what if he took the blood that he grows in his lab and offered it to other vampires like what if he were to you know try to market that what would that look like and 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 like it it's like uh it's a bit ludicrous but but we thought this is what it would look like. And, and this would be the slogan of the company, like the commercials, you know, like some 90s commercial of a kid drinking blood and be like, let it short, drink it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of reminds me of like that, that green drink surge when that was. Right. Yeah. You know. uh, and then the trading cards, of course, are, are I love the trading cards. Um, you know, we've got, got quite a collection going now between the different campaigns that I've run. And, right. Um, I think they're a lot of fun. No, that's awesome. Uh, and do you have, then you have the, your, your author catch up bundle where you get, 
You get every geez Louise. Look at that for 45 bucks. You got so with the author catch-up bundle, you're getting um the entire series of Unicorn Vampire Hunter so far, plus the new the first issue of Vampire Hunter in Space. And so um you're kind of getting all all of my all of my narrative um stuff that doesn't include modern mythology but but um modern mythology i was really more of an editor on so it's, it's really all the stories that i've done um and uh so i'm you know i originally i wasn't going to offer anything except for vampire detective in space on this kickstarter i was trying to streamline it but then people kept saying t saying to me like well we want to buy your old stuff we want to get the the other stories you're doing and everything so so i opened up some of that and uh, and then on the backer kit after the thing is over people will be able to add more stuff to including modern mythology and and whatever else they want to add so this here shows that you'd actually also have 16 new readers for your unicorn vampire hunter that's right that's right yeah because 16 unicorn, people there. Yeah. unicorn vampire hunter is uh seems to be that seems to be my ride or die it seems to be the thing <laughs> like the cord i I think uh, I, I expect to be doing Unicorn Vampire Hunter for many years uh, because uh, it seems to seem to have quite an audience. Um, I hope that when people read this new book, they are if they liked Unicorn Vampire Hunter, I think they'll like Vampire Detective in Space. So I have a very similar storytelling style. I, obviously, I'm the same storyteller, and I and I think I've and I think I have stories with like a really strong emotional core to them. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully, hopefully. You know, people people will like this new series too, but but Unicorn Vampire Hunter is the one that uh, that seems to seem that's to, your masthead title, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have, um, and then you have the yeah, you have your author catch up bundle, and then you have, and so that yeah, that's that. Then what's this? And then you have some add ons too, this right? Is just an, yeah, there's add ons. You can pretty much add on all the stuff, and and the sketch cards. That's uh, Dave Swartz is doing sketch cards if people want those. And then okay. and then the other add on that I have is just for a dollar, because um, that's the lowest amount that Kickstarter would allow for an add on is uh, you can get the whole small favor series, because what I'm going to do is after this campaign, I am going to keep a few copies for myself, but then I'm going to responsibly recycle all the remaining copies of a small favor because they're taking up space. Oh, wow. And um and i'm not selling them anymore because vampire detective in space is really meant to be like the replacement to it it's okay. like the spiritual successor and so this is kind of people's last chance to get that if they want to see kind of the process um it will always be available digitally um like a, you know i'm not going to like destroy the files forever right. or anything like that but but i've been ha i've had a thousand copies of this book sitting in my sitting in my storage unit and in my house my apartment and in different places i've moved I've been hauling <laughs> you're around. Gonna carry them all. and i and i it's like i'm not gonna sell them and uh and that's okay you know that's kind of this it's growing pains but um i figured people want to see and a lot of people have i think something like 60 something people so far have added that on um you know for a dollar you get 150 pages of story the first comic book i ever i ever made and um and and then you can kind of see how i took those characters and those ideas and put them into this new thing right wow so you can't like donate them to a library or anything like that or i mean i, I you know i I'll, I'll there's a thousand copies like right there's you know i'm i'm gonna do my research and dispose of them as as like in the least harmful way i can right um and you know, I'll reach out to some libraries and stuff and see if they want some. But I'm not going to dump a thousand copies of a, of a of a comic book that I think is frankly not that great. Oh, really? <laughs> I mean, I think it's I think it's like I'm I'm very hard on myself. Like a lot a lot of people who have read it tell me no, it's 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 fine. It's not that bad. But but I I didn't really know what I was doing in terms of story. It doesn't the, the a small favor volume one is 120 pages of story and by it maybe tells the amount of story that I feel like I can now tell in 36 pages. Um, I, it's like it, it's it's a whole graphic novel and it feels like the first chapter of a story. Um, I was so ambitious with with this story and where it was going. And it just didn't have the momentum. It didn't have the legs to take it through. I think I would have needed 
probably 500 pages to tell the story as I had originally envisioned it, which is, I mean, that's like a classic mistake that people make when they're starting out is like so ambitious. This is like, you know, and so, um, so I, I, uh, I don't think if I had paid money to have that story finished the way I wanted to, when I first started writing it in like 2015, I would have just lost, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. And, and I don't think it would have been worth the investment. So right. the new book is very much like it's a four issue series. Vampire detective in space is a four issue series. And at the end of that arc, the, the character arcs will be complete. The story okay. will be complete. There's room for it to be expanded, but I didn't write it as four issues are just the opening salvo. It's like four issues tell a whole story. And then if there's a positive response to it, I can, I can do another arc. Um, but I'm just more conservative in how I tell stories now. And this is like a big, sorry, I'm like sort of getting on a soapbox here, but the one of my big one of my guiding storytelling philosophies at this point and i like i hate to like say anything that sounds like i'm trying to be a guru because i, I will reiterate till the day i die i have no <laughs> idea what i'm doing i am make it up as i go along but the way that i write i don't hold back information mm -hmm. i'm like if you you read i think i sent you this issue right um, and you've read unicorn vampire hunter like mm -hmm. In the first issue of Unicorn Vampire Hunter, I tell you, like I start with a mystery and by the end of the first issue, you know what happened. Right. And like it sets up more things, but it's like, I'm gonna give you the information and I'm gonna try to do it in a satisfying way, but I'm not I'm not gonna like do this JJ Abrams mystery box thing where we're guessing for three seasons what the hell is even happening on the island. Because right. I I don't for me, that's not satisfying storytelling. And I but that was what I was trying to do with a small favor. 150 pages in, if you include the two books, you still don't know what's happening. <laughs> Barely the vaguest idea of what's happening. And that's to me, to me, that's not satisfying. So I was like, with Unicorn Vampire Hunter, I was like, issue one is gonna feel like a whole story. You're gonna know what's happening. You're gonna wanna read more, but you're gonna know. I'm not, I'm not like playing coy and hiding things from you. And in this new book, I'm like, here's the mystery here you know where did james come from here i'll tell you it, it's all right here and hopefully learning that information makes you excited about it and and like sets up the emotional core of the story so that when things happen later on they have the punch that i'm looking for but i'm not holding back information and i'm not trying to drag out the story longer than it needs to be right right and and so how and what do you see? So with with your supporters on this, and so like you know, right now you have, um, what were we looking at here? You got uh, oh 200. my goodness, we got hundred two hundred sixty nine. I don't know if you're following this uh, on Facebook. I always post when I get to the sixty nine because I'm. <laughs> uh, in fact, I better I better grab a screenshot of that right now. Screenshot so this right here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a. Oh look at that! That's beautiful right there. How. How much of the as as Venn diagrams go? How much overlap do you see from your unicorn vampire hunter readers? You know is that is a it? that's such a great question. And what something I discovered recently is that um, I, I use Backer Kit. Um, I've started using Backer Kit just with this new uh, with Unicorn Vampire Hunter Three was the first one that I used Backer Kit on, and it this thing has such fantastic such fantastic um uh, uh tools to it mm. and one of the coolest things is that i can see how many people backed previous campaigns oh, and i'm cool. i'm i'm trying to look at it now i don't want to like waste time uh like looking at this but but i um on on i actually looked at it and it was something like it tells you how many backers on the new campaign backed how many of your books so like it's like something like all six campaigns that i because i imported like six campaigns i didn't import every campaign i'd ever done but of the of my mo six most recent ones there was like something like 40 backers that had backed every single one which i was like oh wow that's awesome and then there was a, a as you go like more campaigns it was higher so it was like 
for two campaigns. I mean, people who have backed five of the campaigns, it was like 80. And people who have backed just two of them was like 300 or something. Wow. And so, so, and I, before I used backer kit, I had no idea about that metric. I, I could guess because I could see familiar names popping up again and again. Right. But now that I, that backer kit actually like takes all that information and tells you that, which is not something Kickstarter does. And so I'm, I, I think I'm seeing like a pretty healthy return rate, um, especially within Unicorn Vampire Hunter um, is like um, people who are coming back, which is really cool. It's very flattering because, you right. know, I'm like I'm just I, I'm here. I'm like I'm some dork who wrote a story about a unicorn and like, I want you to buy it. And like, and there's people who apparently read it and liked it so much that they'll come back and pay me again. It's um, to, to read the next installment, which is like the most flattering thing I could possibly imagine. Right. No, that's pretty cool. Um, do you, uh, so yeah, so it's, so do you see, so as you say, you saw some, do you, how, how interesting is it that you've seen like your readers, as I said, with like that to seeing that difference is like, how many do you see new readers because they are more, they prefer more of the sci-fi genre as compared to the fantasy genre. That's a good question. I'm going to have to look. Uh, I'm, right. I don't have to see. I, I have noticed some new names. I will say that um, my biggest base comes from like, um my email list um that i have i always invite people to join my email list after the back to campaign and so that's where i get a lot of my support from and i think that there are some people who are joining this book who haven't read the other one although um i think that based on what i've seen on kickstarter fantasy is like a bigger genre on mm. kickstarter than sci-fi is um certainly when i was writing a small favor but and I was going to do a fantasy book. Some people told me you shouldn't because I don't like fantasy and I just want to read sci-fi. But then I did a fantasy book and it did way better than anything I'd ever done before. Um, and I don't know that it's because it was fantasy, um, you know, but it, it could have just been the right idea at the right time with the right artist. But right. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know if there's anybody who was like, screw fantasy. I don't want to read fantasy. But now that you're doing a sci-fi book, I'll read that. I hope maybe. Right. Yeah. And like I remember when you were talking about it, it's just like there, there's something about where you just have, you're, you're putting in these words like unicorn, vampire hunter, vampire detective in space. Like you just, um, you seem to gravitate towards having those catchy, the catchy titles that seem to have kind of like easy to visualize, you know, what the perception of what you think the story is going to be about. Well, you know, that's like, it's, it's kind of a reaction. Um, thing because my first book was called a small favor which like i you know no one could possibly guess what the heck that was about like <laughs> i had to explain it and my pitch was it took like 30 seconds to even begin to explain what the heck was going on in that book and and the title didn't help at all and so i was like i need books that pitch themselves and unicorn vampire hunter when i go to a comic con i have a big banner with a big unicorn and a, and a big vampire and it says unicorn vampire hunter and i don't have to pitch it to anyone people walk up to me and they're like this is about a unicorn that hunts vampires and like <laughs> and and so i was like why make it harder for myself um you know so that's that that kind of became my my philosophy is that you know the the thing's gotta gotta pitch itself people do judge a book by its cover right yeah that's cool so yeah we're getting out to that top of the hour for you caleb um so if people want to uh learn more about your stuff they can still go to um in keto in in keto studio.com correct you can go to in keto studio.com they can also go to unicorn vampire hunter.com they can go to caleb palmquist.com they all go to the same place wow um i have i'm just sitting on a bunch of urls i don't know like <laughs> that's dumb but um <laughs> But yeah, and then um, if they go to vampiredetectiveinspace.com, right now that redirects straight to the Kickstarter. Wow, okay. All right. Yeah, Vampire Detective in Space right here. Yeah. Oh, yep. no, that's not it. No, where is it? Yeah, this is it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the, that's the page for Vampire Detective in Space on my on my website. And my website, website is like, is like, I don't know, it's not great. But, but at least it tells you what, I, what I've done. 
it's updated though you are it's always updated it seems like it i do every once in a while go on there and, and update it so i need to update the press section i don't know if i have any of my interviews with you on there i think it's been a while maybe i do you have the first one you were on the uh, first you put, one you put comic story and oh i put it comic, so ah uh, yeah yep yeah. see it's been so long that, that was the first <laughs> time. i didn't even label it correctly so i need to go back on there and put what we've done four of these now so yeah this is number four I'm all on yep. there Yep. Yep. Yeah. You've made it to the, the status of friend of the show. So I've already determined, I think I'm going to do the five timers club. So when people okay. are the five times, so. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. So I mean, yeah, you you got 200, almost 270 backers already. You're at 269 backers. You got 10 days. You got, you got over a week left. Yep. Um, yeah. You're knocking on it. You're knocking on the door, Caleb. That's exciting Thank stuff. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Um, so yeah. So you're going to, you're going to come back on again for, vampire detective and space issue number two you're going to come back on for uh, unicorn vampire hunter issue number four and i will else? come back as many times as you'll have me i am the next campaign i'm running will be vampire detective and space number two we're already dave is already drawing it and mm -hmm. the plan is as soon as i ship it out to backers in issue one and mm -hmm. i hear i start hearing that people have it i'm going to launch number two wow okay um, all right i'm 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 ready to ready to hit it and and daryl is currently full steam ahead on drawing vampire uh unicorn vampire hunter number four okay um he sent me pages yesterday um he he and i had had a really good chat about some visual imagery in issue four and and so we are we are we are cruising cruising cool excellent well caleb yeah thank you very much for coming back on and uh I'm um, looking forward to chatting with you again. Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, this stuff is expensive. I don't think I would have bought all this, like, if um, there's, oh, it's wow. like, it's yeah. like all over the place and okay. so i don't think i would this the house was like this when i bought it so i don't know that i would have necessarily gone out and um and bought all this wait it hadn't been for that it was already here but yeah did, did you so when you when you go during the house tour and you saw that it was that the thing was that the was that the thing that made you say, all right, we're getting the house? Like, uh, I mean, it was definitely like something that wasn't advertised like on the <laughs> listing. And so when I had the tour and it was funny because the previous owner just had this room stacked to the ceiling with junk. They weren't oh, yeah. using it. It was the owner before that that had put this stuff in. Oh, wow. And and so this was just like a storage closet. And I was like, holy crap, this is awesome. <laughs> um, and so I don't know that it was necessarily the thing, but it definitely made me more excited about the house. Yeah. <laughs>